tonight, Hilda. I think this is the loudest crowd we've had in weeks here. Yeah! Unbelievable. Good to be in New York City, huh? Yeah! Emerald Lagasse here. Welcome to Emerald Live. Boy, have we got a really, really great show for you tonight. I'm so excited. We're going to salute the sauerkraut Yankees. <laughs> that would be the Pennsylvania Dutch. Yeah! Oh, this food is good. A lot of pork. Like, like pork and sauerkraut, ham and dumplings, sweet garlic. Oh, yeah, man. <laughs> well, you know, they're not really Dutch, but they do live in Pennsylvania. Tonight, we're going to do a few traditional great dishes. I love this food. A warm dandelion salad that we're going to do with a warm bacon dressing. And then a dish that uh, is big, especially uh, for those church functions, a Dutch-style corn chowder we're going to do. Show you that. Oh, yeah, the real deal. Oh, yeah. Talking real corn here. You're really cooking? Uh, cooking here, baby. And then, don't you love ham and dumplings? Have you ever had that? They cook it in the dumplings. Oh, man. And then, of course, they do a lot of canning, and uh, we're going to make a few condiments, like pepper cabbage, and show you how to make a great chow chow, Pennsylvania Dutch-style. How about whoopie pies? Have you ever had them? <laughs> whoopie pies. We got Doc Gibbs in the MLI band. <laughs> Doc Gibbs in the MLI band. Uh, hey, hold on to your schnitzel. It's Pennsylvania Dutch cooking right here on Emerald Live. Oh, yeah, Pennsylvania Dutch. You know what I think what is really great about this style of food is the respect for the land. Obviously, it's very fertile, lots of vegetables, lots of gardens. That makes for lots of pickling and jarring and canning. They, they love pork. <laughs> pork is big. It's bad. It's great. And uh, we're going to do a few of those dishes. Then they preserve a lot of things. I'm going to show you later on about this corn chowder that I was telling you about. Well, it's not your typical corn that you'd make chowder with. But this first thing, oh, and we have Carol Adams. And you happen to be with Central Market. It's yes, nice to meet you. It's nice to have you here. Thank you. In Pennsylvania Dutch country. We want to thank you for some of the artifacts that you, that you brought from Central Market. And you also have a little philosophy, because you live there and born there, right? One of the owners. One of the owners. Yes. So what is your philosophy of Pennsylvania Dutch cooking? Uh, How would you tell people in America what it's all about? Basically, they now grow... Now, keep it under an hour, Carol. Yes. <laughs> they, they grow their own food. They grow their own food. They Love cook that. their own food. They put it up, and you can't get much better than that. Now, I have a question about that ham dumpling thing. Uh-huh. Now, can I ask you this? Not sure. to put you on the spot. Would you take your ham out of that stock kind of thing with the apples and stuff before you add the dumplings? Or would you put the dumplings right in there with the ham? Um, I would probably do it together. Okay, that's what we'll do later then. <laughs> Carol Adams in the house, and you folks are from Pennsylvania as well. Welcome to the show. Nice to have you. Welcome. They drink a lot of wine in Pennsylvania, um, in the Dutch country, I, or beer? I, um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Water. Water. Okay. All right. We'll live with that. We can live with that for right now. A few minutes, I'll change that. <laughs> All right. Here we go. I'm going to start one of my favorite salads that I had the pleasure of having. We start with adding a little bit of bacon, first of all. Love that. <laughs> you know, when you start with a recipe, you know, you get a recipe that says, start with bacon. I'm revved up. You got my attention right there, let me tell you. 
So we're going to start getting this bacon a little crispy here. For this bacon is going to be the salad. We're going to get this nice and crispy, and then we're going to take it out of this skillet here, saving a little bit of the bacon drippings. And then, as Carol said, a lot of the produce. They grow a lot of produce. And they grow it, they cook it, and they eat it. Fantastic. How good? I mean, how good can it get? I have a bunch of assorted lettuces, believe it or not, from Pennsylvania. I've got some red leaf, and I've got some escarole. I've got a little chicory here, or a frisee. And also, I also got some local radishes mm. that we're going to slice to eat. A lot of radishes, particularly in chow chows and pickling and things like that. I love radishes, so we're going to add that. Very, very simple. Now, I'm going to add one lettuce just to sort of round out the salad, which is endive. This is not from Pennsylvania Dutch, though. Got to cheat a little, you know? <laughs> oh, give me a break. So you can really decide whether you want to just sort of use the leaves. Some people will just take a knife and chop it. But we're going to use a little endive. And then the great thing of what I find fascinating with this salad also, beside the dressing which I'm going to show you, is really how they use fried potatoes. And it's kind of near and dear in the salad. Like, no croutons, fried potatoes. So you got to already think where my mind's at. Pork fat, fried potatoes. Oh, come on, man. Crispy bacon? Oh. 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 I'm having a problem over here already. Okay, so now what we're going to do, I've taken the potato, peeled it, diced it, however big you want it. Then I blanched it in a little salted water for about 10 minutes until they were fork tender. In New Orleans, we'd call this Brabant potatoes, but Pennsylvania Dutch fried potatoes. Love it. These are what they look like after they have been blanched, and then you want to be sure to drain them and really make sure that you towel either with, you know, just a white paper towels or a clean cloth towel that you want to be able to really get the water out of them. Then what we're going to do is we're going to actually fry them in vegetable oil about 360 degrees. Had a conversation with someone last night, I'm not going to go into a lot of details where, but I had a conversation with somebody that said, <clears throat> you know, fry foods are bad for you. <laughs> and I said, excuse me, Missy, but <laughs> yeah, she's smiling right now. She knows what I'm talking about. So I had to explain to her that, yes, fried foods are bad for you if you eat bad fried food. Because there's good fried food. This is serious. It was even in a, a big article in the New York Times recently. You got to have the right oil. You got to have the right temperature. If it's not at the right temperature, what happens is it, it like sucks in the bad oil. And that's when like when you bite into it, it's like that gum that squirts. You know what I mean? <laughs> but if you eat really good fried food that's done properly, fried properly, the right oil, you got good fried food. Are you with me so far? Yeah. All right, so we're frying, we're frying some bacon, we're frying some potatoes. We're in Pennsylvania Dutch land. When we come back, another notch! Stick around! We got Cliff from the Pennsylvania Dutch. 
That's right. Charles on bass. Teddy on drums. And Doc Gibbs. All right, folks. If you're just joining us, shame on you. Cooking up some Pennsylvania Dutch tonight. And uh, we've got that bacon now. I turned it slightly down so that you could uh, catch up with us here. Bra Brabant, so those fried potatoes are inside of the vegetable oil. That's because we're really cooking. <laughs> Unlike those other shows. <laughs> now, take that bacon out. Save. See this? Bacon drippings. Oh, man. When I go into those big, fancy department stores, I don't know why they don't have this in the cosmetic department. <laughs> you let this stuff get cold, put it in the refrigerator, put a little of that on your skin in the morning, shh, you're there. I'm here. It's the little things, the little things that excite me, you know what I mean? Little things. All right, let's get on with this salad. So uh, what we're going to do is I've got the heat on. I've turned it now down to, like, medium-low. Okay? See, high, medium-low. That's what we want. Because what we're going to do now... Let's check on these guys here. You? No. They're getting there, but you want them to be fairly crispy. Remember, we're going to kind of... We're frying these to kind of be like the crouton thing. All right. Before I get too far ahead of myself... A little brown sugar. And we're just going to take that brown sugar and sort of dissolve it inside of the bacon drippings. <laughs> oh, I wish. Once that gets dissolved in there, then what we're going to do now is we're going to deglaze this with some apple cider vinegar, which is used a lot. Pennsylvania Dutch. Not only that, watch this. This is going to make the dressing. But I don't want to... I'm just slightly warming that. That's why we got the heat down. All right, you ready for this now? Yeah. Watch this. What we're going to do is... Let's put some chopped endive in there, too, just for the heck of it. Everything all right over there, sir? <laughs> Try to get a hold of yourself there, please, sir. Just kidding. If I had him in my ear, I'd be laughing too. <laughs> now, I thought we would put some hot cooked eggs in this thing. Like from the barnyard, right? Mm -hmm. You know, they've got to be like fancy chopping these things. I mean, you know, these fancy choppers. I mean, just chop the egg. Get a life. <laughs> Cliff, how you doing over there, bud? Great, you smell the love in here right now? Oh, I smell Just it. Just wait. Feel it. All right, watch this. We're going to add the egg in here. Little salt. Bam! Maybe a little more. Bam! See, it's even distribution that way, you see? <laughs> Some fresh ground pepper. <laughs> you know what I think we'll do? This is pretty Pennsylvania Dutch. We're going to take an apple and we're going to grate it. Right to the core. Some grating music by Doc Gibbs. Oh, yeah, Doc. Thank you very much. That was perfect. Now, we're going to add the apple in here. Then we're going to slightly toss this. You with me? Oh, yeah. See how good that looks? Now what we're going to do is this. We're going to take the fried potatoes, drain them good. Remember, anytime you're frying anything, you always want to season it when it comes out of the fryer. It's vulnerable that way. A little salt. And we're going to add the fried potatoes in there. <laughs> Oh, playing with my emotions here. 
a little more pepper. Then we'll take that delicious dressing and just do this, look. Oh, man. Then what we do to just finish it up, you just ring the bell. <laughs> you got an incredible salad with dandelion, fried potatoes, warm bacon dressing, a little crispy bacon, and there you have it, all right? All right. Yours is coming, Cal. Don't forget, you gotta make some friends. Now, let me show you another great. Nice and light, delicious. Thank you. This next dish, this corn chowder. This is a sort of a favorite sort of church gatherings, school gatherings. People make a part of this. But you would think that it would just be regular corn. What I'm doing is I've started a little bit of pork belly or salt pork. Oh, I love that. <laughs> Going to a restaurant, says pork belly on the menu. I make two reservations. <laughs> Now, I'm going to render that pork belly down. Let me talk to you about this corn. Doesn't look like corn. They preserve a lot. They dry a lot. They'll do this with a good summer crop for the winter. It's dried corn. Other name for it is called shaker corn. Okay? When you're ready, you got to soak it. I've soaked this corn now basically for not quite a day, eight, about 18 hours. It's going to absorb a lot of water. If it does that, just keep adding. And this is really delicious stuff. So here's what we're going to do. Once the pork belly starts rendering down, we're going to add some onion. And to that onion, a little bit of cayenne pepper. Ah, a little more. <laughs> Celery salt. One bay leaf. A couple of cloves of garlic in there, right? Yeah. All right. So the corn soaked, dry corn soaked. What we're going to do, I'm going to let this cook for about four or five minutes and get a little of the love out of the onions and the garlic and the celery salt. I'm going to drain right now my corn. I'm going to drain this corn in here, okay, in a little colander here. Get all that moisture out. Now, while that's draining and the onions are cooking, we're going to rock out with Doc Gibbs. Don't even think about touching that dial. Stick around. Welcome back, everybody. Emma Lagasse here. Kicking up Pennsylvania Dutch cooking up a couple of notches here. Carol Adams is uh, with us as well from Central Market. And uh, again, want to thank her for the artifacts and lots of uh, love about Pennsylvania Dutch. This corn soup. I've drained the corn really good now. The pork, belly, onion. Oh, what a combo. Now we're going to add the corn in there. Now, let me tell you something about cooking with this stuff that I learned. Pennsylvania Dutch land. You're going to start adding to this corn chowder a stock, preferably 
a chicken or, you know, if you have, I guess, a corn stock, which you could make with the kernels or whatever. But let me tell you, don't get alarmed. If you start cooking this, see how much stock I'm adding in here? Don't get alarmed if while you're cooking this corn chowder that it starts absorbing the liquid. Because that it was dried, even though that we soaked it, it's still a little thirsty. You know that thing. So if that happens, you don't have to call 911. Just add a little bit of water if that's the case. Once this cooks for about 15, 20 minutes, okay, we're going to add diced potato in this. 15, 20 minutes, let it cook. Going to add potato in this. Now, a little bit of salt. And we're going to add a little bit of pepper to this. Now, once it comes to a boil, lower the heat, let it simmer. People, they just crank the heat on full blast, and then they just, like, think a miracle's going to happen, you know? It's a food of love thing. It's why they make these. See, high, simmer, medium high, medium, right. They're not like decorations. So now, I'm going to turn the heat down a little bit. So what I used to do, just turn, take all the knobs off. <laughs> just to mess with people. Oh yeah, try cooking like that. <laughs> I'm having a little knob action here, Doc. I noticed. Usually I don't have any knob action. <laughs> Anyhow. I'm leaving my knob off, okay, if you just joined us. The knob is off. We're moving over here now. Slowly at that. All right. You know what this dish is? It's a pure taste of Pennsylvania Dutch. Sweet, salty, which they do a lot in their cooking. It's called schnitz. And nap. And nap. Schnitz and nap. Sounds good to me. <laughs> Let me tell you what Pennsylvania Dutch schnitz and nap is. First of all, a ham, as you can see here, that's pretty lean, not too fatty. You could also use, and what's used a lot, is a boiled ham, like you buy a chunk of boiled ham. Then the first thing that you do is you cover it with water. And then what we're going to do is we're going to let this simmer. That's a little bit too high right there. We're going to let this simmer a little bit. And while it's simmering, I put it in there first for about 20 minutes. Then I add some onion. Some people add carrot, celery, depends on traditional wise, basically just a little onion and a little brown sugar. Why? Because the ham's salty, right? So it's a salt and sweet thing. So we're going to add a little brown sugar. Now, while that's happening, they take preserved or dried apples. So they have a lot of apple orchards. They dry out the apples or dried apples, and then they soak them for at least about an hour, plump up these apples, okay? I told you earlier they do a lot of preserving. Then what happens, after this simmers for about 30 minutes, we add the apples, like I have, without the liquid. So it's this apple and ham, salt, sweet thing going on. You with me so far? Because yeah. it's a schnitz and nap thing. <laughs> no, I'm not going back to the handle. That's old news. Now, watch what the next step is. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
cooking with mirrors over here. <laughs> We're gonna sift some flour, some baking powder. Gonna add a little salt in here. Then what we're gonna do is add an egg. Love this. Mix that egg in here. A little milk. Can always add. We're gonna stir this and make a dumpling batter. <laughs> Now, this particular dumping, dumpling batter, and there are all sorts, should be fairly thick. Unlike spätzle, which is a, a dumpling, you may take all of this milk. Now, if for some reason this got loose because I added the rest of that milk in there, you don't have to panic. Just add a little bit more flour. See how thick this is here? Almost looks like a dough, right? But that's how thick it is that they do for these dumplings. Now, what they'll do is they'll get a spoon. And once this simmers, starts getting happy. You know what? Let's add a little butter in here. Shh, don't tell anybody. They'll all want some. Yeah, we'll make them a little richer. We'll add a little bit of butter in here. And then what they do is they spoon this, like on the top, like this. See this? Am I right, Carol? Absolutely. All right, babe, I'm just checking in with you. <laughs> See that, folks? We're going to sp spoon these dumplings right in this pan. All right, I'm going to start spooning these dumplings in here. And when we come back, Pennsylvania Dutch, another notch! <laughs> Shame on you, Emeril Lagasse, and we're cooking up a storm here, Pennsylvania Dutch style tonight. Now, look at this. Mm. What's the name again? Schnitz and Nap. Schnitz and Nap. <laughs> what are you laughing at at home? Go in the bathroom and say that ten times straight. <laughs> Schnitz and Nap. Schnitz and Nap. Look at this. There is so much love in here right now. But wait, before we go there, look at this. Oh, you're telling me? Oh, you ought to be here. What we're going to do now, folks, we're going to add a little bit of cream. Well, they got a lot of cows up there. They got to take care of them. We're going to add some milk. Okay? Now, before I go over there, let me just tell you something. You want to mix this in, and you want to cream it right at the end. And the other thing that you want to do, you don't want to squash up all the potatoes. So now, once that comes up to temperature, you got to taste it. Oh, look at that, corn chowder, huh? Pennsylvania Dutch style. Oh, my God. <laughs> Folks, it's incredible. Not too much spice, not too much salt, just fantastic. Dish it up like that. Little scallion if you have it, or maybe some chives. That's how simple it is. Pennsylvania Dutch corn chowder. <laughs> Carol. All right, I'm going to... Now. Oh, yeah, we got to make room here. Now, here's what we're going to do. 
first thing we're going to do is this. The schnitz and nap. Oh, boy. Going to go in there and get that ham, first of all. OK? Not only are we going to do that while we're there. This is my trick, Carol. Watch this ham. It's just like almost going to fall off. You see this? Get a couple of slices like this. Oh, yeah, babe. Feeling good, too. It's so tender, this ham. So you slice the ham like such. A lot of the salt now is inside of that brine, that's that water, that liquid, right? OK? So we got the ham like that. Look at how tender this is. You can't even pick it up. Shh. <laughs> hey, this thing ain't running on air. Then look, the dumplings and the apples. OK? Can you feel the love? See, they like all them apples like that. We'll put a few of those, like, right over the top. Go back for some dumplings like that. Ooh. Another round of dumplings. I don't know what you guys are eating, but this is looking good for lunch. <laughs> and there you have it, folks. All right? You just garnish it with a little bit of chive like that. Just a little bam, 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 bam. Just a couple of little bams like that. All right. Now, nah, what we're going to do is this. We're going to take some more apple cider vinegar. Oh, wait till you see this. We're going to make, what's a great, they make a lot of condiments, like the chow chow we talked about. This is peppered cabbage, which is also a great thing for this. Apple cider vinegar, a little bit of honey. You dissolve that in there. Crushed red pepper flakes. Celery salt. Little mustard seed. Steep it up. That's what I got right here. Shredded cabbage fine green pepper, spring onion, red pepper. Take that mixture like that, pour that over there. A little salt. <laughs> and some pepper. And we're going to have pepper cabbage with all of these great, great dishes from the Pennsylvania Dutch. We come back, another Knox. Stick around. See where they just swung right into the old Pennsylvania Dutch. Look at this. Traditionally, how this will be plated is then on a little plate like this or a platter. Folks, don't let me stop you. And then they drizzle a little bit of that liquid in there. So that, oh yeah, babe. And then this pepper cabbage, they'll serve some of that on the side, you see? Or as a condiment, like I said. They do a lot of canning. My friends, there you go. Thank you. There you have it. The real deal, huh? Yeah. Oh. Put the lid on that for, for later. <laughs> so, the ham just like falls apart. It's in that chowder. Oh, All right. Pennsylvania Dutch. Whoopie pie. Gotta love them. What we're gonna do is I've got sugar in this bowl here, and uh, you can use shortening or lard would work too. I guess butter would work, but traditionally, 
and a little vanilla. And what we're going to do is we're going to bring those ingredients and we're going to start this cooking technique called creaming. While we're good, the real deal, huh? Excellent. <laughs> happy, happy. So while that's creaming, we're going to take flour and sift it. Now, there's a couple of reasons why we sift flour. Everybody thinks it's like because there may be bugs in it. I don't know where they come up with these things. That's why we sift it. You see the lumps right there? That's one of the reasons why we sift it. The other reason is because we're aerating. We're adding a little air into the flour like that. Baking powder. Baking soda. And then what gives it that nice color, cocoa powder. Oh, yeah, babe. See, and that's why you sift that, too. You see all those little lumps there? Gone. All right, now we've got that together. Now. Everything all right over there, ladies? I didn't mean to embarrass you when I said whoopie pie. Now, while this is creaming, you can see the, how this looks right here. We're going to add one egg at a time. See, this is why I like this food, too. The liquid that they use for this, buttermilk. Oh, man. <sighs> Pork fat, dumplings, buttermilk. Oh. These people know how to live. So now we add the liquid in there. And then what we're going to do now is we're going to take our dry ingredients that we sifted. But you see, I like these folks here. So we're going to turn the machine off. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> I'm going to take our dry ingredients now, and we're going to just put them right inside of the machine, hopefully with no mess. Come on. Come on, baby. Come on. Beautiful. Get our dry ingredients in there. Okay. Now, you want to set the oven on about 350 degrees. So you don't want to put it on 10 right now. You know, just easy, like these folks. Nice people. So once this gets into a cake batter now, I've taken a piece of parchment paper, lightly buttered. Then when I get my cake batter here, I'm going to spoon a tablespoon for each little whoopie pie. You with me? 350 in the oven. We come back another notch. Stick around. Welcome back, everybody. Emma Lagasse cooking Pennsylvania Dutch tonight. Just before the break, 350 degrees, folks. It doesn't take long. You want to use a good tablespoon, just like I got here. 350, 10 minutes. Come on. That's easy. 10 minutes. Then this is what they look like, OK? Now, while you let them cool a little bit, you beat some couple of egg whites to a stiff peak. To that, believe it or not, you add a cup, about a cup and a half of shortening. Let's turn this thing off here. Get this thing in there good. About a cup, cup and a half of shortening in there. That's going to give it the foundation. Okay? Then, a little milk, some vanilla, powdered sugar, Kind of like making that marshmallow stuff, you know? It's a bad hair day today. <laughs> now, I like these folks again, like I said, so easy. 
And what we're going to do is work all of that stuff in there, and that's going to make the icing, or the cream, if you will. Then, when that's all nice and mixed up, you get a nice little spoon. You see? Take that icing. Yeah. Then you put one like this. Now, what I do to kick it up a few notches at home, take a little chocolate sauce like this, a few of these whoopie pies that we make right here, okay? We're talking whoopie pies over here, all right? A little bam, 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 bam. Hey, I'm Emeril Ladasi. I want to thank you all for joining me. I'll see you tomorrow, everybody.